Let's uh, now invite uh, our first corporate on the show. M&M Financial Services had reported its first ever quarterly net loss uh, of over uh, 15 crores. Uh, but uh, we have the management now joining us. Of course, uh, uh, Ramesh Ayer is with us. Uh, uh, Mr. Ayer, good morning. Uh, so, of course, you know, last quarter was uh, loss making for you. I'm sure demonetization would have had an impact. Uh, but have things started to look up in this quarter? Uh, yeah, in fact, even last quarter, it's important to look at uh, the quarter into three different months. You must look at it as October, November, December. And October was a great month from a volume perspective. The business was good. Uh, November up to the first eight days was good. Then, of course, all of us know what happened then on. And then December also showed some recovery. And we do see that uh, sentiments have returned back to some kind of a normal scene rural. And we do expect good things from Iran. Okay. Morning, Ramesh. Good to have you with us. Well, Morning. let me just get a, a couple of numbers out of the way. La, at the analyst meet after the results, you told us that 659 crore of GN, uh, NPLs uh, were not recognized because RBI gave you that permission of uh, two more months. How have they since performed? Uh, are you uh, largely seeing that money being paid up? So if you look at it, uh, you know, the crop was good. But mm. the money didn't come in in November, December, mm. and that got delayed to this quarter, and that's the reason we also went ahead taking that uh, you know benefit, mm. as otherwise we would not have wanted to. But we knew for a fact that the cash flows got delayed, and we have seen that the at least the farm cash flows have returned. It's important to understand two major states like Maharashtra MP, which went through poor monsoons two years back to back, are actually having two good crops. Mm. So the money is returning back. At least the farm cash flow is pretty good. Okay, so we shouldn't worry about, uh, investors shouldn't worry about 659 crore, it could be a smaller figure. Yeah, it's basically because it's just shifting of cash flow from a quarter three to quarter four kind of a situation. No, no, is it the entire amount? That, that will be the big worry for investors, isn't it? No, so I think most of the money will come back. I mean, even if mm. you look at from that 659 crores, I would imagine upward of 60% or plus will be from tractor cash flow. Okay. okay. Right, that's one. Second is, I think it's also important to understand that while there are multiple cash flows that come into the rural market, but the sentiments and the larger yeah. chunk of the cash flow is farm dependent. Mm. So if the yields are good, the cash flow is returning back, I think we have every reason to believe that most of it would get corrected as we go along. Okay. If, you know, if, if, if you look at your numbers, what really stood out for me was commercial vehicles uh, financing, uh, uh, the kind of growth that you saw. Uh, uh, what what led to this kind of growth? Because uh, you know that would be uh, quite a big thing for the in, uh, for the economy as well. Uh, or do you think it was a bit of a one-off? Uh, I don't think our numbers are an indication really from a commercial vehicle perspective. We have a small base. We are not a significant player when it comes to commercial vehicle. But nevertheless, um, you know, and in our case, the commercial vehicle also has a mix of LCV. So I think it's not really heavy commercial vehicle per se. But yes, we had a decent growth in that segment, the one, as I said, out of the low base, but also because of the LCV kind of vehicle did well for us in some of these pockets. And as a pan-India, we do get the benefit and all put together is really the growth rate out there. Okay, so what would you say will be the growth uh, uh, of uh, loans in the current quarter itself? Has loan growth broadly picked up? So if you look at, and I said that, you know, in the third quarter itself, we had a good growth in spite of demonetization impact in beyond 8th November. But October by itself was upward of 20, 22% growth for us. So as of date, if we speak, I mean, even when you looked at December 31st numbers, we had a growth rate of 12, 13% plus. So we do expect that these kind of growth rates would continue. And we always get the benefit of a deeper penetration with multi-product approach and therefore everyone trying to sell some small number out there and we get benefit of that. So I don't think our real problem is on the asset side growth rate. I think we've been going through tough times and as far as the uh, rural cash flows are concerned, like therefore the focus was more on recovery rather than really worrying so much on the disbursements and we don't see that as a challenge. Okay, some analyst reports worried about two things, Ramesh. One, that your net income that is, your NII plus other income was up only 2.7% YOY and actually down 5.9% QOQ. I can understand the QOQ impact, but uh, even uh, year on year, it was up only 2.7%. Also, your expenses were higher. Operating expenses went up by 23-24%. Uh, 
I mean, are both these now showing the opposite direction? Uh, can we see more NII growth? And why did this happen, this operating expense? Okay, no, first is NII. Mm. I think if you look at from our revenues, we knock off the income reversal arising out of the NPA. Mm. So it's not a shrinkage of the margin arising out of lending rate uh, minus the borrowing cost. Right, it's actually the net income after adjusting for the income reversal to the NPA. So no sooner you start recovering back from the NPL accounts, you'll start seeing a direct improvement to the NIMS, which is very obvious. So that's no pressure because I don't think our lending rates have come down. And in fact, we get some marginal benefit because of current borrowing cost going down. So far as expenses are concerned, I think, you know, it's a productivity ratio out there because for the same effort, you actually are recovering less. Right, and we have added people, and I want to be absolutely clear that we do have a very clear view on how we look at the future going forward. So we've added branches, we've added people, and they are not producing enough because of the current market conditions. But I don't think we want to wait until things improve and then add capacities. So in a way, we are running a little excess capacity when it comes to our penetration and people are concerned. And uh, we would very strongly think that the productivity will kick in as volumes come in. We may not add to cost as we start improving from there. Okay. Uh, well, uh, uh, finally, what kind of uh, uh, loan growth may you end the year with? Uh, and which may be the verticals that lead it? So, uh, I may not want to put a number <coughs> out. We are not losing market share in any product is something that uh, I can confirm to you. In fact, we are gaining some market share in some of the product. Also that, you know, we are very large player in comes to Maruti range of vehicle and Maruti doing well, we getting the benefit clearly. And uh, as far as uh, the verticals are concerned, I think the car segment is doing well for us. The pre-owned vehicle segment, I'm reasonably sure after the demonetization where, you know, customer to customer selling, or, you know, a lot of uh, wholesale purchases, a lot of check payments will all happen because the brokers in between were buying vehicles on cash and that's gone a little slow. So I think pre-owned vehicle will be one segment which will give us some good benefit. Commercial vehicle, though low base, we do expect that that's one another growth area for us. We are retaining or slightly growing the market share when it comes to the Mahindra range of vehicles, tractors, etc. So I would think there'll be a growth coming from almost all product, but accelerated growth would be from the car segment as well as the pre-owned vehicle segment. Okay. You would say that you're, uh, I mean, how may you end the year in terms of GNPA? You have just about, what, 40 days, or not even 40 days, 30 days left for the year to end. What might you end the year with in terms of GNPAs? And uh, therefore, will this provision problem persist for a couple of quarters more? So two things will happen. One is we've already moved to 120 days a year before RBI <coughs> wanted us to. Okay. Right. So therefore, when you compare any number with the previous year, we must always keep this in mind that we are already at 120-day levels. Okay. I think the 90-day will kick in next year. Mm. And uh, as a company, we've always taken a view of trying to be as advanced as possible on that front. So therefore, the regulatory impacts will possibly continue for some more time. Mm. Fourth quarter normally has been one of our best quarters historically any year you look at us. And uh, the cash flows are good out there. The crop money comes in. The wedding season comes <coughs> better. You know, all of the activities are positive sentiments out there. So to that extent, whatever benefit that we get out of the cash flow improvement, we will get. But we shouldn't forget that the regulatory change will kick in. But I think there's one interesting figure of ours you must look at. We're already carrying upward of 800 crores excess provision over the RBI requirement. Excess would mean... You know, we've kind of made accelerated provision as compared to the requirement. Okay. So that's a very large number of reserves that we carry out there. Wow.